Welcome everybody, good morning. Uh, thank you for being here uh, for the tutorial on hyperbolic representation learning for computer vision. I'm very glad you could make it here. My name is Pascal Mettes. I am an assistant professor at the University of Amsterdam. And together with uh, Mina Gadimiatik, who is a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam, Professor Martin Kalleressa, who is a, a professor at TU Dresden, uh, Jeffrey Gu, who is a PhD student at Stanford University, and Serena Young, an assistant professor at Stanford University. Today we want to talk about hyperbolic geometry and why you should care for your computer vision applications. I'm going to use this one. So we are in an era of deep learning. Right? I think you would be hard-pressed to find a paper at this conference that doesn't use deep learning. You might find one or two, but it will be very hard. And regardless of the type of architecture or network or any other choice you made, you will end up in somewhere on this regime, right? Whether you use images, videos, text, or whatever, there's some form of convolutional network, two-stream network, transformer, vision transformer, etc. So we are quite heavily involved in deep learning. Uh, and it has some consequences. There are some choices being made and some assumptions being done. And today, I want you to challenge one of, the, one of those and maybe enter a new uh, direction in this uh, deep learning era. Uh, and that choice is the choice of manifolds. So at the core of all these networks that we have are things like dot products, matrix products, sums, all these kind of elementary computations, all Euclidean operators. And the question is, why do we have these operators? Well, we can think of a few reasons, right? When, when we go to elementary school or high school, that's the geometry you're being taught, right? A triangle has 180 degrees. If we have a line with two lines through it, they must cross exactly one time. All these kind of basic assumptions. So it's what we know. Uh, sometimes our data itself can be explicitly in Euclidean space. I have an example here of an actual building, right, that we expect it to be in a certain geometry. Uh, and also, very pragmatically, uh, it's what our GPUs expect, right? These kind of operators are, are very basic in our uh, GPUs that, that we use today. So along the way, in the last well, multiple decades, but especially the last decade, we've been de developing these deep networks, making new and new ones, but all with the Euclidean operators. And the question we ask today is, why? Is this really a fundamental choice or is this just a pragmatic choice, a, uh, an implicit choice that we made? And can we challenge this? Can we do something else at least or something better? Uh, yeah, and, and where does this direction lead us? So taking a, what we call a non-Euclidean view to computer vision and deep learning is not new to us. Every year at the conference, we see a lot of uh, positively curved uh, cases, uh, spherical cases. So if we want to do operators on the entire globe, like predict the weather, for example, or anything in that, that order, you have to work on the sphere. So the, then we see spherical CNNs popping up. Or if we work with fish eye cameras, all these kind of things, these 360 degrees kind of cameras, uh, we work with these positively curved uh, things. And people already figured out that if you plug a normal network in there, things don't work optimally because everything is distorted, right? There's no longer a square grid. Now, the question is, if we have Euclidean, which is, we could say is zero curvature, and we have positive curvature, is there also an opposite side? Uh, well, yes, there is. They're all, say, different sides of the same coin. So what we're going to talk about today is all the way on the right, which is hyperbolic geometry. So hyperbolic geometry, we typically call negatively curved space. And if I want you to remember one slide of this entire morning, it's this one. Uh, if you want to think about what is hyperbolic geometry purely at the highest level of abstraction, that's a bit hyperbolic, the statement itself as well, but it's just to imprint it in your mind. Is it, it's a natural geometry of hierarchies, of trees. And it turns out in a lot of cases uh, in computer vision, in deep learning and beyond, Hierarchies are everywhere. And if you don't believe me, this is uh, a crop of a poster about ImageNet. ImageNet that we typically see as like a flat thing that we do uh, one hot encoding over. But if you see how it's constructed and how it actually is, 
It's anything but a flat space. It's completely hierarchical. It makes sense, right? We have all these dog trees that form a dog and then mammals, etc. So it's a, it's a complete hierarchy, uh, but we're not using it. And what you'll find out this morning that there are many, many cases where our data, the knowledge of it is hierarchical, or the metrics we want to impose on it are hierarchical, but we don't use it. On the other hand, uh, data itself can also be hierarchical, sometimes implicitly, maybe in our pixels, or explicitly if we have some graphs. There are a lot of hierarchies uh, involved. And if that's the case, then I would c consider hyperbolic geometry as your default choice uh, for representation learning. So what does this morning look like? So right now we're doing a, a high-level introduction. In a minute, Martin will talk about what is hyperbolic geometry. We'll go into a bit more details uh, about all the operators and what, what changes if you go from your normal Euclid, uh, Euclidean geometry to hyperbolic geometry. Then we'll take a short break around 10. Uh, afterwards, we'll, we'll dive into computer vision specifically. So first, we're going to talk about supervised learning. Right, what have we done in supervised learning in the last few years for computer vision? Uh, and in the last part, we talk about unsupervised learning, both self-supervised and generative, uh, in the last few years in computer vision. And we'll, we'll end with like a future outlook. Note, this is a schedule for if we talk most of the time, we have until one. So we don't mind at all if you have any questions during the presentation, just raise your hand and, uh, and ask any questions you might like. So we, we have the time for it. Uh, we would, li we would uh, very much welcome and say, an interactive component to this. So if you have anything is not clear or going too fast or you have any other clarifications, just let us know. Uh, and that's how we, we want to plan this morning and then we should be in time for lunch, uh, which we then deserve, I, I would say. Uh, so without much further ado, uh, oh, before we do that, actually, before we go into intro, this is not just a tutorial as in just a slide deck. We really want you to get started in this. And to, let's say, entice also the pragmatic people amongst you, we have made some notebooks. Uh, so they're on the website. Also, if you, if you go from the, from the conference, click on the website, you'll, you'll, you'll find this. Uh, where we ma made some notebooks with explanations and code for a number of uh, papers on hyperbolic geometry. So a bu uh, really a bunch of pivotal starting papers and a, and a few recent ones both for normal classification of few short learning and these kind of directions, where you see line by line how certain layers are implemented uh, or how certain things are changed to make work with hyperbolic geometry. So if you have a problem that you might think benefits from hyperbolic geometry, use these notebooks as, let's say, a starting point for your research. And also contact us if you want to uh, do something together. Uh, but that might also be a more hands-on part of this tutorial. So in this morning, we'll mostly be talking, uh, but there will also be, let's say, uh, uh, a more hands-on part that you can uh, use at your own uh, afterwards. Uh, and with that, I want to give the floor to Martin to give a talk about what is actually hyperbolic geometry.